If the Kawasaki Ninja 250 is the NA Miata of bikes, then the Suzuki SV650 is an FRS. A little bigger, more complicated, and with enough power to bite back, but plentiful in production to remain affordable. Oh, you're not a car, it seems. You're an SV650. Cute and small, but powerful. No matter what the dealer sees. This is a medium displacement naked sport bike that everybody thinks is a beginner bike because people trade them for $2,000 to $3,000 in most transactions. It looks docile, right? That big, innocent eye. Mattel toy-like instruments. That visually soft and curvy truss-like frame. Those Roundy round cute mirrors. That short wheelbase and little pokey rake. Aw, little Suzuki. Do a big putt-putt. Oh, wait, no. The SV650 was Suzuki pulling a sneaky on the motorcycle community from 1999 to 2014, and then again on from 2016, and everybody keeps falling for it. As of this year, 2019, it's still being made and remains one of Suzuki's best-selling models. The best thing about this bike is the way it turns. There's no shuddering, oscillation, or sensation of instability in turns. There's an asterisk to that, but we'll get to it. An SV650 changes direction and lean angles like a hungry New Jersey seagull dives for a fry. Most medium displacement sport bikes are all-rounders, like my Suzuki 650F slash Bandit. It does everything okay, but it's really a general purpose sport, not, not even sport bike, more like sporting bike, chap. Suzuki was like, Let's build the nimblest, thriftiest bike we can safely. And that means everything on this motorcycle serves the handling. The riding position is dead nuts center, not further back for comfort like my 650F. The seat is a two-piece design with a shelf between the driver and passenger. And, and the driver section here is also very small. This keeps your dumbass ass from sliding backward and screwing up the weight balance. The wheelbase is short to reduce slug. The fork angle is MotoGP steep, and the engine is not a traditional sport bike inline four-cylinder like my 650F. It's a V-twin, retaining double cams and four valves for high revving safety, but all the power is low, low, and mid-range. The 90-degree V makes 70 horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 46 pound-feet of torque at 7,500 RPM. Top speed is in the neighborhood of 130 miles an hour, and the wet weight of the bike is only 417 pounds. Compare that to the 83-horsepower, 45-pound-feet 650F, which weighs 540 pounds wet. Yeah, this full-fairinged i4 bike makes 13 more horsepower, but it weighs one soprano sax player more. And because the SV has the same displacement and valve train architecture, but guiding only two large pistons instead of four small ones, this adorable naked soft boy has balls. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember this statement. An SV650 is not a beginner bike. No matter what the dealership salesman tells you, an SV650 is not a beginner bike. No matter what a Craigslist ad says, an SV650 is not a beginner bike. No matter what your locker room gear dealer tells you, an SV650 is not a beginner bike. No matter how little Debbie the Facebook Marketplace's child is that the owner placed on his SV, took a photo, used it as a thumbnail in a dirty attempt to appeal to your sympathy, 
an SV650 is not a beginner bike. When Suzuki built a sharp handling, short wheelbase, lightweight, torquey AF bike, they unavoidably made a wheelie machine. Let the clutch out too fast and whoop, the front wheel hops up. Let the clutch out too slowly but twist too much, whoop, up comes the front wheel again. Leave the clutch alone, but roll on the power too aggressively while leaning over in a turn. <laughs> the SV still wants to go all unicycle on you. And there's no engineering this out, because early SVs were twin carbureted bikes. No fueling computer at all. Just a braided steel cable running to two Makuni side draft constant velocity carburetors. That gray jelly inside your helmet is all the traction control a Gen 1 SV has. If you twist, well, the butterfly valves open, air volume increases, the slides rise, the needle jets pull out, fuel is sucked into the Venturi, it atomizes instantly, and the go fog is pulled into the eager cylinder, and like it or not, the power is already here. Good luck, chuckle nuts. Even in sixth gear, an SV650 is still bucky. Now, this is a sensation I quite enjoy, because I know I can use the power to shove the bike around if the situation allows for it. It's a fool's move, and I shouldn't be doing it because it leads to a low side or high side crash faster than a flat brim renews his learner's permit. But that's the type of freedom that you get when a bike is focused to do one thing, to be flickable and light. People call the Kawasaki Ninja 250 flickable. It isn't. Not compared to this. The SV650's handling, I mean, it, it's a total Japanese manufacturer move sticking it to Europeans. This thing, this thing was made to bury the Ducati monster. All right. Yeah, and you know, the manufacturers have done this before. Honda did it when they outdid Moto Guzzi with the Silver Wing. Honda did it when they made the Shadow American Classic or whatever, the one that made Harley all butt hurt. Although that's not a European bike, but you get what I'm saying. This is Italian style as interpreted by Japan. People get all weird about carbureted bikes, and I guess it's because there's no, like, mappable anything to tune them. Later versions of the SV became fuel injected, and that increased popularity more. Uh, but for me, uh, carburetors on a really light bike like this are honestly better. All it takes to adjust throttle response is just tightening or loosening the throttle cable. You can change power delivery by changing jets, but, but there is a trial and error to tuning a carbureted bike. And due to the nature of the 60 degree V, the two Makuni carburetors are tucked way, you can't even see them on the bike, they're tucked way up, up against the fuel tank. And they're even arranged really weird. So you have to take the tank off, you have to take extra accessories off. It, it's a day project to really get at these carbs. I mean, if you're used to SVs, you can do them quicker. And But that's probably the hurdle that people get over when they get all, ooh, is there, <laughs> there's like forum posts, is there a way to convert my SV to fuel inject? There isn't. And honestly, Makuni carburetors, as long as you're putting stable in them, you could probably have this bike for 40,000 miles and you'd never have to touch the carburetors once. As long as you're putting stable in. Anybody who's in the bike should have an SV at some point in your motorcycle history. It's like getting handcuffed to a bed. Just, just, just do it once. Just to see what it's like, to understand what sub <laughs> to understand what submission is really about <laughs> you, you're submitting to what this bike demands it demands your attention and you're gonna have it it's a very exhausting bike for me to ride you have to be awake all the time because you're in control but the bike is constantly you sure you sure about that you sure you're not going fast enough? Let's go faster. Let's do this. Take this corner harder. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. It's, it's one of the most fun bikes you're going to ride. And it's one of the cheapest bikes you're going to ride. These things are crashed all the goddamn time. It's like that one friend who just says, do it, do it, do it. And then you do it. And then they said, I didn't really tell you to do it. Why you, are you listening to me for? <laughs> this bike's a bad influence. It's so gosh darn inexpensive. It's a little bit small for me. I'm five foot ten, five foot eleven, and I found that I was trying to stop the bucking and trying to stop the front uh, wheel from rising. 
by shifting my weight. I was laying like most of my torso on the tank when I was riding this thing. I was trying to just get weight over that front wheel so the bike wasn't just all the time. But you got to respect this thing. And it's tough and people don't do it because it looks so innocent. But this is a medium to advanced bike to ride quickly. And you're going to want to nail this thing every time between lights because the torque is instant. You're going to find yourself looking for the tightest corners you can find to see if you can scrape the pegs. And you can. This bike is made to be leaned over. It's one of the most popular bikes for uh, AMA racing, track days, amateur racing, because... Again, they're so cheap. You don't really have to do anything to these things. Yeah, I guess you can put higher, higher foot pegs on, you can drop handlebars, clip-ons, change the front forks. But like an FRS, it's ready to go on the track and have fun. Have fun. Get out there. Tear it up. But remember, an SV650 is not a beginner bike. Stay safe out there. Know the difficulty spikes you could have ridden any bike no beginners ride you light so i guess here's what you chose <laughs>